So really, when you want to think about you know, how to model um, kind of from point A to point Z with T-splines, um, the first thing is to identify really what the problem is. You know, what is it that you're trying to model? In this case, you know, kind of component, for instance. And then what you would need to do to be able to uh, facilitate the modeling of that object. Now, because we've covered already, you know, how to, to use symmetry and, uh, you know, how to array this, you know, in a couple different ways, we're not going to cover all of that. But what I do want to show you is going all the way back to um, where we started, the plane, the very, very simple plane. How you can creatively work with the plane um, to actually begin to develop something a little bit more formally interesting. Now, you notice this is the plane. We have three by three, and we've edited the faces. We're going to mirror that object about uh, this axis. So let's do it. Let's go to T-splines primitives. Let's create a plane that has three by three faces. We're going to use our edit mode for T-splines. We're going to edit the faces. And we're just going to move them up. And I'm using my exact value of 2. Now, at my object level, I'm just going to go ahead and use my simple mirror command from Rhino. So now I have something like this. Now, we've looked at how you can manipulate and, and, and start to work with the control grips. We've also looked at how to extrude. But there are a lot of other function, uh, functions that you can use in um, T-splines um, that are going to be really fantastic um, for um, kind of starting with a simple primitive and getting to something a bit more sophisticated. We're going to take a look. Um, one of the last things we're going to look at uh, this afternoon is the bridge. Uh, we're going to look at bridge, and um, we've already looked at crease. Um, so we're not going to uh, get into that, uh, but we're going to you know, focus on, on looking at a bridge and then something called thicken. So the bridge command allows you to connect two T-spline surfaces by adding intermediate faces. So you know, if you had, for instance, something like this, this kind of um, you know, um, uh, donut, uh, I guess you could say, steering wheel um, around, and an element interior, you could bridge between those elements to produce something um, that looks like that. Now, what we're going to do is look at how we can use bridge um, to creatively um, connect between these spaces. So, bridge. Now, if we look over here, and you know, just to be clear, we're going to try to to bridge between this face and this face, this face and this face, and repeat that here and here, so that we can start to get more geometry, even though we start with a very simple primitive. Now, the bridge command, again, is under modify. And uh, if we walk over, um, we can see, let's see where that guy went. The bridge command here, you'll see a kind of T-spline surface, a T-spline surface, and some arrows. And it asks, select face groups to bridge. So we just click and click. You confirm and hit enter. You'll notice that it has arrows to ensure that they're um, aligned correctly. And you hit enter. And now you have a bridge. Let's repeat that one more time. I'm going to click and click. I'm going to repeat that again over here. So one and two. One and two. Awesome. So if you notice, we have a lot more geometry here, right, to work with. 
And if we go into our smooth mode, right, we can see that we have some issues. You know, well, I mean, it's working correctly, but you know, we want to um, kind of elaborate upon this form by um, removing some things to get it to smooth out even better. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just copy this over and um, zoom in, and we're gonna look at another command called delete. And delete is awesome because you can come over here at a face mode, for instance, and select a face and just use the command delete. So I'm just mousing around and deleting pieces. Anything that I don't want. And I end up with something, right? that looks like this. And back in smooth mode, you'll see that now it smooths perfectly. All right, so that's, that's a really nice um, tool, really good functionality. Um, back at smooth mode, and uh, rather box mode from smooth mode, you can see that we get back to here. Now, if I go back to smooth mode, right? What if I want this thing to actually have thickness? Well, there is an object which is really helpful. You know, as we're, you know, you see three D printing, the price is becoming more and more and more accessible. Um, you know, using something like um, the thicken command will become very relevant to you uh, if you're interested in printing. Uh, we hit enter, and now you can just slide in right to define the thickness now I find that if you just enter a value maybe say 0.125 uh, that's a little bit easier to do and if you run that again say 0.25 you'll see uh, see the difference here and that uh, is a, a watertight um, solid now now what's nice about that is that same command with um, the face selection, you can use to open up the edge if you wanted. You could say delete this, and you can see that now this is open here at the edge. Right. Or alternatively, you could select faces, and if you wanted, you could add in more subdivisions. So if we go back to this guy, the subdivide face, you could always right click and add subdivisions as well. So you can see that this will now let you refine that edge. Now somebody had asked a question about the, uh, the use of creases, and um, this is a really great example to show you how that um, is useful. So let's go back to our smooth mode. And with our edge modifier on, as I click over here, I'm going to try to make this edge and this edge, we're going to make them crease so that this right here is no longer smooth, but rather um, it's going to be uh, completely flat. Now to select all these edges, uh, individually would be um, kind of cumbersome, so I'll just double click the edge and it'll select the loop, or the ring rather. And we took a look at that crease functionality, so I'll click on that and you'll see that now this is going to be creased interior. And I can go right over to here and I can crease on that side and you'll see that now we get a nice hard edge. So that's really just reusing the tools that we looked at um, in the earlier examples, right? So the edge loops, um, that's a way that you can select a continuous loop of edges to facilitate faster, uh, more um, kind, of, you know, kind of ease of use uh, when you're wanting to do things like crease or, or uh, move edges, um, et cetera. 
The subdivide is the simplest way to add more detail to your T-splines model. If you noticed in that last example, we used it to be able to add in more faces so we could um, essentially uh, operate on the edge of that um, piece of geometry to make it completely flat. And you have different ways to um, use those, uh, that command using either simple or exact. Um, I used the simple command, uh, uh, rather the exact command, which uh, only inserted them uh, specifically where I had selected. And then the thicken command, you know, again, was a way for us to be able to easily um, offset our geometry and making a, a, a thicker, more, you know, a solid, essentially. And then the uh, subdivide with the creasing allowed us to um, essentially create a flat end uh, for the piece. That crease um, is really the trick um, to be able to add perfectly sharp um, uh, creases to the edges of your T-spline objects. And here you can see what happens with the, the curvature continuity as you approach the crease. 